What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Because members get exclusive content. This story, once again, takes us to High Desert State Prison, where the Southsiders exercised a bloody removal. Well, as I alluded to before, every prison is different and it is all the same at the same time. It's different in that they have a different set of rules. Some rules, again, naturally, are universal. No snitching, you know, uh, no chomos, etc. But different yards, different prisons, and different leaders have different protocols. On some yards, you may be able to gamble with another race or gamble with your own race because on some yards you can't gamble with anyone your own race or another race it just depends on the yard the leader and the history of the yard in this situation in high desert state prison apparently things were a little bit loose as far as the protocols were concerned when it came to Gambling with another race. We were able to do it. The South Southsiders were able to gamble with the blacks. This didn't happen often, but there were South Southsiders who gambled with blacks. There was one in particular. I know for sure because I used to gamble with him, bet on the football games. And he gambled with a few blacks. However, he ended up getting into debt with his gambling and couldn't pay it. And every leader... It's going to let you know if you are allowed to gamble, then you must be able to pay the debt because gambling is just a, a, a way, a pathway to violence, a pathway to danger. Because if you cannot pay the debt, then there will be consequences. And that's why many people just stay away from gambling altogether. Well, this guy, having been divested of common sense, decided to continue to gambling, to to continue to gamble, knowing that he could not pay the debt. It was brought up that he ended up on four or five different blacks, and that's a no-no. That's an embarrassment to the Southsiders, based on the way that they carry themselves. In high desert, they were strong, they were structured, and they were serious. They didn't play any games, and they didn't want any other race to think that they played games. They wasn't going to have that. And for one of their own to be gambling with the black and not paying his debt, as far as they are concerned, is a transgression and made them look bad as a whole and so they decided they were going to send a strong message to every race and to their own race that should you do this and transgress and, and, and get involved with something and can't stand on what you done got involved in this will be the consequences as a way to preserve all of us and apparently the plan was set in motion. They did let the blacks know that they would in fact remove him from the yard. That in fact they were going to remove him from the yard regardless. And on this one particular day, they decided that they was going to get him in the day room. Now, there is no such thing as night yard on a level 4 prison. Now, on a level 1, 2, and 3, you will have night yard, where the yard is yard recall 
at about 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. It's dark outside on the yard. People walking around with their headphones, bumping their music, drinking pruno, smoking weed, chopping it up, doing whatever at nighttime. But on level four, yard is over at about 3.30, and that's it. But most level fours, they do have night day room. And high desert, even though it was a 180, it had night day room. And apparently they decided they couldn't wait until the yard the next day that this guy had to go right now. Now, oftentimes, people don't do stuff in the day room. It ha things happen in the day room. But the day room is so small and compacted, particularly on a level 4 or 180, that if you start attacking someone with a weapon and the police start shooting, someone else can get shot. Someone else can get injured. And... So oftentimes things don't happen in the day room. They happen on the yard in a bigger setting. But again, some things cannot wait. This was one of them. And the word went out. Be careful when you come to the day room tonight. The Southsiders have some business to handle. In other words, at this time it wasn't no cell phones. But if it was, that's the call. Don't bring out your cell phone. Don't bring out drugs. Don't bring out a knife. Because again, they may strip out everyone in the day room. After this goes down. So, the word went out. Come out. Don't have anything on you. They're about to put in some work. A removal is about to transpire. Fine. Nothing new. And there's always something going on. A word coming down. Essentially daily. That someone is about to get removed. Or something is about to happen. Daily. In high desert. You could not sleep. And. They release the day room. And sometimes people do. What they call bus and laps in the day room. You just walk around the day room. Some people playing cards. Some people on the phone. Some people over here shooting dice. Some people over here drawing with their headphones on. Everybody doing in, the, in their own world. Just trying to get out their cell for the last time that day. For a little while. And they had the Southsider that was the target. And they were busting laps with him in the day room. Walking around. And again, they put their arm around his shoulder. To make him comfortable. And put him at ease even though I believed he knew that something was going on because of his actions what he had been doing he knew that the word had got out he knew that it got back to his people so he knows better than me what his politics are and what's about to happen to him and so as they were walking and I'm sure they had a, created a distraction with the police I don't know they had his one of them had their arm wrapped around him, around his shoulder. This is so when the other one comes up and hits you, you can't get away. Because again, oftentimes people try to run in these situations. And so if he has his arm wrapped around you, making you comfortable, and you have your back to the person that's approaching you, about to hit you, once you get hit and try to run, dude has his arm wrapped around you. He can grab you and hold you. And, and, and then he starts on you. And they're both on you. And so I knew the move. And that's exactly what happened. He had his arm wrapped around him. And they were walking around the day room. And someone came up from behind. And hit him right in the back on the side. Boom. I said, oh, my goodness. He got him pretty good. And he hit him again. Boom, boom, and they kept hitting him. Now, he did try to get away, and dude grabbed his, dude that had his arm around him, he grabbed him, grabbed his shirt, and he slammed him to the ground. And now they both on him. The dude is on the ground, just balled up. He curled up, trying to curl up his head and curl up his neck to block him from hitting him in the neck or whatever. And they just hitting him in the arm. They hitting him and 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 they hitting him incessantly to finally. He was just laying there motionless. They actually dragged him under the stairs and left him there. Now, the police will often come around during day room and do a little walk to make sure everything is okay in each section. 
or they have to come by and do closed custody count at 8 o'clock at night. They do closed custody count or they do a regular count, whatever. Oftentimes, they're going to come through at some point. But they can be 30 minutes away, 40 minutes away. Meanwhile, he's right there under the stairs. And the dude in the tower, he hasn't noticed that he's laying under the stairs leaking profusely. At first, he was twitching. And then he stopped. He stopped moving. I didn't know what to think of the whole situation. I knew he had been injured pretty bad. The Southsiders, meanwhile, had actually changed their clothes. They had time to change their clothes. Took off their shirt. They had blood on their shirts. They took off their shirts. Were able to wash their hands. Got rid of the weapons. Because no police has come in the day room yet. And the tower doesn't know what happened. Even though dude is over there under the stairs. And finally the police come in the day room. Doing just a routine walk. A routine count. They see him under the stairs. They hit the alarm. Everybody down. Everybody had to get down in the day room. The police come rushing in there. A stretcher came. The ambulance came. The nurses and all that came. And they were pumping him and trying to patch him up and stop the bleeding as they was putting him on a stretcher. And the police had everybody down and they took him out. And the police had everyone sitting down in the day room for maybe 30 minutes. And then a goon squad came. Because often, well all the time, when there's an attack with a weapon, the goon, what we call the goon squad. This is the gang unit in prison. These are the elite police, the elite COs, the well-trained, the ones who supposedly can come in your cell and find your cell phone just like that. Find, find your drugs that know every gang on the yard, everyone from the gang who has influence on the yard. It's their job to know this sort of stuff. And so when a weapon is involved and someone is injured, here comes the goon squad taking notes with their notepad, trying to get to the bottom of it. If they caught the person or not, because they want to see if it's going to go further. They want to know if it's going to go any further or if this was a, situ a situation that's going to end right there. And so the goon squad was there because they did not catch the people that did it. And so what happens is a goon squad come and they strip you out. If, if they don't catch the person that did it, if the towers didn't see who did it, other police officers didn't see what happened, and that was the case in this situation, then oftentimes the goon squad going to come, they're going to find out where the victim is from. Let's say he's from Hoover. They're going to come first. thing they're going to do is look at all the Hoovers and see if it was an inside job. Who attacked this man? Because it had to be, as far as they're concerned, because if he was from Hoover and he just got attacked this viciously, then it should have went up. If another group did it, if, if an enemigo did it, if another faction attacked him like this, then how come the Hoovers didn't attack the faction that was attacking their homeboy? So they automatically think, well, it must have been them that did it. So what they'll do is come stretch, strip out that particular group. They're looking for scratches. They take pictures of your arms, see if you have any cuts on your hands, and see if you've been using a weapon. And... That's what the goon squad did in this situation. They found out where the Southsider was from. And they start stripping out the Southsiders looking for wounds, defensive wounds, whatever. Uh, cuts, blood, etc. But as I said, they had already changed their clothes and got rid of the weapons. And I'm sure the goon squad had a notion as to who did what, but they could prove nothing. Because there were no cameras in the day room. So no one went to the hole. They just did an, an investigation. We were on lockdown for about two weeks. Because at this time, lockdowns were prolific, particularly in high desert. And they would last a long time, 18 months, two years on lockdown. This is normal. Six months, eight months. Ridiculous. Now, as I said, they can only put you on lockdown for two weeks. Two weeks. 
and all of California prisons because of stuff like this. But we was on lockdown for about two weeks over this situation because they didn't know who had did what. And so let's say a black had did that. They don't know, even though they were, you know, can assume that that wasn't the case. Because again, if a black had did this, how come the Southsiders didn't attack right there in the day room? It would it, it, it would have went up. If somebody would have did this to a who, it went up. Somebody did this to a neighborhood, it went up. So they automatically assume it had to be another Southsider that did it. It couldn't have been a white. It couldn't have been an other. The Southsiders wasn't going to stand there and let them attack their people and have them leaking under the stairs. Of course not. So they automatically start focusing in on that one particular group. But everyone is in danger of getting strip searched and having something put, on, put upon them, having a case put on them or whatever. Everybody's in danger when they don't catch the person that did it. And we were on lockdown for two weeks or so, and we came off lockdown. And dude survived. We did find out that he had made it. But his lung was punctured. They did puncture his lung. I do recall. Because they was on him for so long. Because the police didn't see what was going on. They didn't hit the alarm. They didn't, lay, they didn't stop. And they, didn't, they didn't spray the dudes or whatever. They have ways to stop these attacks. Once you just already start hitting. So they come in there and beat you. Spray you or whatever. But that didn't happen because they didn't notice what was going on. Another reason people tend to do it in the day room or, or when they do do it in the day room, that would be the reason. Instead of on the yard where it's so big, someone's going to see what's going on. More than likely on the yard, at least some other incarcerated people is going to see it, if not the police. But right there in the day room, uh, it's only one police in the tower as opposed to the yard where it's four or five gun towers. And police just all on the yard walking around looking. They got binoculars. The police, the towers got binoculars. They looking on the yard to see what you're doing. Who has a weapon? Who's doing drugs? All of this. The yard is more scrutinized. So you can get away with more stuff in a day room. The last the story I brought you where the, the stabbing happened in the day room. With the Hoovers and they removal. They got away. Because oftentimes you can get away in the day room because it's just one police tower that has to watch all three day rooms. And if you can distract them, then you can get away with a little something on your side of the day room if you make it quick and bust your move. And that's what they did. And they got away. And dude, lung was punctured, but he survived. And this was over gambling, transgression against a protocol. And there was a bloody removal. Because the Southsiders didn't play. The Blacks didn't play. The North Daniels didn't play. Even the others. The Muslims had a car in high desert. And as I emphasized before, the whites, yeah, well, they were standing on business. And in fact, my next story takes us back to high desert state prison. Where the whites executed a bloody removal. This one transpired on the yard. And what I saw, well, it was queasy. It made me, it, it, it was surreal. Dude had a hole in his neck the size of a golf ball. It was eerie. I'm a human being with human feeling. Don't like seeing all this violence. But I had to learn how to live with it. Coming up. The whites execute a vicious bloody removal in high desert state prison. Stay free, people!